Hi guys, I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another Instagram Live with Britasia TV and I'm your host Raj, I'm back. And today I'm gonna to be talking to Manny Sandu. Okay, so Manny's been around for a very, very long time. He's very well known, he's, he's a really good music producer. He's worked with almost every single artist now in, in the game. Um, it'll be really fun to talk to him. Koshish karange thodi bhot Punjabi bhi Punjabi de vajri gal kariye, cause Manny can speak Punjabi. Um, so yeah, we'll try and talk to him. If you guys have any questions, um, you guys can drop them in the comment section below. And yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna send him a request. Usually, with this, I can't get hold of the artist straight away, but we shall get to him soon okay i'm a bit out of breath i've been running around so ignore that we shall calm down slowly okay okay who am i going to see uh bus that's it i'm waiting for it to connect connected hi manny how are you What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, man. Good, good, good. Chilling. Uh, just been working today. Had a busy day, and um, yeah. Seems like you're chilling, to be honest. Like you, you seem really mm. chill right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a long day, man. I was started doing some music in the morning and been running around doing like family stuff. Uh, yeah, man. It's been a long day. I'm looking forward to having some roti and calling it early night. That's that's. <laughs> That's good. Um, Manny, how's, how's your time been in, in lockdown? What did you do? You've been dropping out music, so it hasn't been a stop mm. for you. Yeah, to be honest, it's like there's two ways to think about it, really. Like, one way is you can just be productive and get music done so that once this lockdown stuff is over, you're ready with a lot of material and, you know, you, you're ready to go. That's pretty much what we've been trying to do, to stay busy, stay active, look for some new singers. And yeah, the time's just kind of flown by, man. It, it feels the same, really, because if you're a producer, you're most likely going to be at home or in the studio anyway. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it hasn't really been different in that aspect of things, I guess. And your studio, you have your own studio, so it's not like, you know, you have to travel anywhere. Is it at home or is it somewhere a bit away from home? No, it's at home. To be honest, if it wasn't at home, I don't think I'd ever go. Like, I, I need I need the studio right next to me at all times because you never know when you're going to get creative. Like, you might feel it any time. You might wake up at four o'clock in the morning and feel like, oh, I want to make go make some beats. So it's good having it close by. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, you got some new music coming out because you've been creating it in, in the lockdown? Definitely. I mean, we it, it, we kind of had music that was made in lockdown and even released in lockdown. Like, um, Manudine was made in lockdown and it was released in lockdown. Um, even Majel was made in lockdown and released in lockdown as well. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot more stuff, definitely. I think the main focus has been trying to find um, some new people, some new artists and stuff. Um, and now we've got the time to do it, do you know what I mean? Because we're not travelling, we're not out and about. So... Yeah, it's, it's, it's been you've good, been, man. It's been you've been in the game for so long. Like, it's been ages since you've been around. I mean, I hope that doesn't make you sound old, but <laughs> <laughs> you've been in it for quite some time. There's a lot of change now. Um, mm. You know, like, you know, even Bhangra music in the UK, it was very, like, you know, tall and all that. But that's kind of changing. For you, how much has it, has it, has it become a bit easier? Has it become harder? Is it more creative for you or...? Um, I guess if you if you hear my music, like even from the older stuff, I didn't really used to follow the traditional UK sound. So like my music never really had like too much like percussion, like dolki tabla and stuff. It was I guess it was always a little bit more urban than um, desi. You yeah. Could say. Um, so um, yeah, I mean it, for me, it's kind of been like an easier progression to like work with what's like working in the industry these days because my sound has always been like quite hip-hop r&b kind of influenced anyway do you know what i mean um but it's good like if the music just stayed the same then we'd get bored everyone would just get bored like it, it, there would be no you, you wouldn't be competing with anything whereas competition is what keeps me kind of on it do you know what i mean like it makes me want to just learn even more learn new things learn different kinds of sounds and softwares uh, if if it wasn't for that, I, I would have probably 
my sound would have probably just died a long time ago, but it carries on progressing because music is changing as well. So yeah. I, I, I welcome the change, man. I think it's really good. That's that's good. In terms of like the UK market, it's see some people are saying it's dying down. Some people are saying it's just not releasing much. So it hasn't died down. It's still there, but mm. we're not releasing much. You have been one of the active producers of the UK, so it's like every other like month or even every other day we're hearing music from you. Mm. Is it? Why do you think that's the reason? Like, is it why are you like one of the only ones active right now? Um, I think, I think the UK industry went through a phase where it kind of, it definitely everything started to sound the same. And like, like you said a second ago, like it was just about like songs, like DJ songs, basically songs that would work on like weddings, like parties and stuff like that. Um, so it was definitely a decline. Like but once that kind of music stopped working, the people that were making that music kind of stopped doing that as well. But there's definitely still people that are around that as well as me. Like, you know, you've got um, like True School Lot, they're doing stuff with their label, Check One Records. You've got like, I guess the ones that have been around always, like Dr. Zeus and stuff, people like, people like that are still around. But what I think we're going to see in the next couple of years is there's a lot of younger people now, like people in their early 20s, singers, producers, that are slowly starting to come through. So we may not see it at the moment, um, but a lot of that is definitely going to be coming through like very, like within the next couple of years, I think there's going to be um, some fresh talent coming from the UK. Do you always have like new talent approaching you and like, you know, wanting to learn? Like, do you do that as well? Um, not in, not really in terms of teaching like anyone. I haven't really taught anyone in terms of like a singer or I, I wouldn't be able to teach a singer to be honest, but even a producer, I, I haven't really done anything like that, but we're definitely looking, we're always looking for talent. I mean, I think that's something we've kind of been um, known for really, like even back in like 2000 and even before 2016, like we started working with, you can say in 2012, Brab Gill before he was like a big singer. And then in, 2016, 15, we started working with Akhil. He was an unknown guy. Um, fast forward to like 2018, we worked with Navan. He was a, he was a completely new guy when we started working with him. So finding new talent is that's like the the best for a producer. It's the best thing like taking someone and and introducing them to the world and like making them you know try and blow up. So um, yeah, yeah, we're always so, looking man. Yeah. So it's always a thing, like, you know, you always want new talent. Like, even we've, we've seen Gary's also putting out posts, like, new producers, new mm -hmm. talent coming through. So we could be seeing more potential, like, you know, Punjabi music growing in the UK. Are you, are you saying that in the next couple of years? 100%. I think there's going to be a lot of singers, producers, um, musicians coming in the next couple of years. So it's a good time, man. It's, it's definitely going to be a good time for the UK uh, market. We're going to be pushing a lot of it as well. We're already working with some um, UK new, new guys from the UK. Um, uh, it would be amazing if we could find some female like vocalists, whatever producers, anything, man, like to, to, to push through as well. Um, yeah. Because we don't really see that a lot. But um, yeah. I definitely think in the next couple of years, we're going to be hearing a lot of good music in the UK. Now let's talk about a bit more about you. Last year was like an insane year. Like you worked with almost everybody in the industry. We saw this picture of you sitting with Sidhu as well. That was a bit amazing. And then... I don't think that was me. I think that was someone else. I don't, I don't know who that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You weren't in that picture? Okay, I'm, no, 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 okay. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm having a little bit. Anyway. Uh, unless, unless it was a Photoshop one. Uh, yeah, I'll be a Photoshop <laughs> one. Okay, so anyway, last year you worked with almost every single artist in the market. You worked really closely with Jasmine, and then you even won Best Music Producer at the Music Awards. Um, what's it been like? Like, you know, has there been a bit more pressure on you because it's like so constant and you're putting out music all the time? Or like, how has last year affected your career? I should say. Uh, it's definitely affected us in a positive way because it's, it's it's quite a simple thing, really. Like my brother used to say this to me all the time: the more you release, the more people are going to know about you. The the bigger you're going to become as an artist. Um, so only the only a positive can come out of if you're dropping music on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Last year we had. Um, I can't even remember, like, as in, this stuff is happening so fast, like, 
I can't even remember what songs we released last year. Like, I'm trying to think, did Punjaba come out this year or last year? I think it was last year. Um, uh, Punjaba yeah. was definitely towards the end of last year, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. yeah, probably, probably, yeah. And like we had loads of songs with Nav. Um, I'm struggling to think what else we released, but it was a busy year, basically. It was a very busy year. And um, that definitely, obviously, because we released it independently as well, um, we've got our own record label collab creations. We dropped everything on there. Um, it's helped build us up as a label to a point now where we're having other people come approach us saying, can you release our song on your label, which is something that we, we, we've always wanted to do. Um, even like Navan's latest single, it was produced by Sam D. Uh, we done the video and stuff for it, but it wasn't a Manny Sam D production. But for me, as long as the music sounds good, I'll, I'm happy to drop it however, however the artist wants to do it, do you know what I mean? In terms of your record label, even, even you said that you, you've got a YouTube channel, you've got your own record label. Is that a bit more helpful when you want to put out your music like straight away? Because it gives you a bit more independence as well when you're putting mm. out songs. So has it become a bit more easier for you as a music producer? 100%. Like, I remember we haven't worked with other labels that much, to be honest. But when we used to work with them, it, it, I, I never really enjoyed it, to be honest, because you were just handing someone control over like like your baby almost like like everything you've worked so hard for like you you know putting hours and hours and hours in mixing the songs mastering songs and producing songs like and then you just hand it over to someone and they've got full responsibility of it and sometimes they don't really give it the right kind of attention it should with your own label we can say like to every detail how we want the song to come out and that's there's no better way of releasing music and I mean, we started our label in 2013, and if you know it's now, everyone is dropping music. Every artist is pretty much dropping music on their same on their own page, which is the way forward, man. I, I think that's how it should be. In in the next five years, I think who knows if labels are even going to exist? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And in terms of like you know music coming out and music being so constant, I was I actually made that point before. But music is so constant, so. Is it extra work for you? Because people are coming to you every single day, probably, like, to, to make music. How fast is it that you have to work? Has the pace kind of, like, changed? The pace has definitely, definitely changed. Like, you know, where at one point we would work on a song for, like, months and months and spend, like, three, four months working on a song, um, that doesn't happen anymore. Like, it's, it's literally these days you get a song and you really want to try and finish it within a week or something a week or a week and a half two weeks max and then you just got to move on to the next one you got to keep releasing like you can't think this song is going to be a hit or this song has to be a hit if you start thinking like that you're basically working in a different kind of business model in terms of what the Punjabi industry is you just need to release music if it works it works if it doesn't then move on to the next one yeah yeah I I kind of separate because I, I do the charts and like you know I look at that really closely we've realized that over the past like I think two years like there's definitely a Punjabi mainstream and then there's like the tracks that are not so mainstream so mm -hmm. every track that you've dropped have always has always made it into the charts do you realize that they're making it into the charts is it something that you've kind of noticed or is it because you're a UK producer so there's more streams and you're focusing on that more um I mean yeah streams is definitely more important to us compared to anything else like whatever we, we do good on youtube and stuff but over youtube our main focus is like you know the big streaming platforms like apple music spotify um have i noticed that we've been in the chart definitely yeah like it's it's a way to measure how good your music is doing like who's listening to what some songs stay higher in the chart some songs don't stay as high in the chart like i think um Benjibba was in the chart for like the maximum amount of time it could even be in there like 32 34 weeks i don't know yeah um, Dorp Al done really good for us in the chart. Um, Majel has been number like one for two weeks running now. So, yeah, we, we, we I mean, it's, it's not like I, I wouldn't think of, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to release a song because I don't think it's going to chart. It would never be like that. It just so happens that so far the music has been doing well and it's been charting, which is, it's, it's massively appreciated, man. Like, we don't ever like take that for granted ever. Yeah, as a music producer, like we've even seen Mandi name it in the chart in the first week that it was dropped. That was a track that was made like you know, just over lockdown. You guys, you gave a whole story about it, how it kind of came about. 
mm -hmm. terms of that, like I was speaking to Navan as well, and he was saying that you know it wasn't a planned track. Like we didn't plan the track; it was just something that Manny made the beat, and we kind of came up with lyrics straight away. Um, even that track made it into the chart without even having a video. So as a music producer, although like you make the track and that's kind of like you know your duty done but do you think like a track does better if it has a music video is, is a music video more important now it is like it's hit and miss i would say 80 percent of the time a song probably needs a music video if you want it to reach like the mass audience now and again a song comes out like where you can just drop it as an audio and it kills it but even then, if it kills it, they end up shooting a music video to it anyway. So pretty much, I guess you can say that music videos are important. It's because a, a big part of our audience, which is India, they listen to music on YouTube as opposed to like, like Spotify, Apple Music. That is, that is big out there in India, but the main like, platform, I would say, in India is YouTube to, to find music, listen to music. So... Um, it's important, man. It just helps spread the music out a little bit more. People want to see the artist in the video and stuff. So I, I think it's quite important that, you know, we have music videos and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Coming to that and talking about, like, you know, Punjab and, like, you know, the, the audience in Punjab, the, 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 the industry in Punjab, because it's mainly in Punjab. We have a couple that are, like, out in Canada, some in England. And how hard is it for you to work with the artists in India, do you usually travel or do they travel down? How does it work usually? Yeah, it's normally like, for example, when we done the early stuff with Navan, like In Demand, um, radio and all that kind of stuff, it was me having to travel there and shoot the videos over there. Um, but once he started to get a bit of a name and he built up a, more of a following, we, we were able to get him to the UK. So like he shot Sick Tone over here, he shot Sandu Takeover over here. So a lot of it is traveling, but obviously these days we have phones and stuff. We have WhatsApp, we can talk on WhatsApp, we can share songs. Majority of the songs that are made are made all over the phone. Um, like Navan will send me a voice clip, I'll send him a beat, then he'll send me the vocals. Um, that, that's just mainly how it works because it's a lot easier. Um, but I, but then it's good because sometimes when we worked with Ezu on Monday night, like when we first recorded the first first bit before the version that everyone heard, as we actually done another track for me, we were in the studio together. And that's like a different kind of buzz, you know what I mean? Where you're in the studio working with the artist, he's composing, we're playing beats, beat after beat after beat, whatever they want to hear, they, they can hear. It's, it's a, I definitely enjoy being in the studio with the artist more because it's more of a personal touch, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. And in terms of like, you know, just your growth and like, you know, from back when you started and when you look at yourself now and like the tracks that have came out, like, like, how do you measure your growth? Like, is that something you look at? Do you look back and do you realize how much work you've done or? You not know, yet, you know, not yet, not yet, not yet. Like maybe when I'm like older and I'm like, yeah. I don't know, like 45, 50 years old, then I'll look back and think, okay, yeah, man, like we've done some, we've done some good stuff, but right now, it's not, I don't even want to think about what I've done. I want, I want to think about what I'm doing and what I want to do in the future. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much more left for us to do. And like, we've got big plans as well. And I think if you become too comfortable, then you can start, you know, you, you get too comfortable, basically. Like, you stop putting in the effort, you stop putting in the hard work. Whereas even now, like, I'm probably my biggest critic. Like, I will listen to my beat over and over again. And if I'm not satisfied with it, I won't, I won't even be able to sleep sometimes because I'll just be thinking about it and I'm not satisfied until I get it right. I'll work days on days and days just to get one beat right. Um, and that's the kind of attitude I need to carry on having until that day comes where I can just sit back and look back at everything we've done and, you know, be proud of it. But yeah, has I'm not really thinking where, has, has there been times where you've literally not liked some music that you've made and you've had to scratch yeah. it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that happens, man. And like, it. Like for example, I've I've worked on some beats where I've been working on it until like four, five o'clock, six o'clock sometimes in the morning, and at the time it sounds like the best thing I've ever made in my life. And then I wake up the next morning and I hear it, and I'm just like, nah, man, this 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 it's not it. it it's not right. And like, that's like probably eight hours I would have spent working on something. But that happens over time, man. Like, as in, 
you know, you you need to keep on finding ways to be creative and being inspired. Uh, even even Dr. Dre says, Dr. Dre's one of his best quote is like, never stop being inspired. The day you stop being inspired is when you're just going to lose creativity. So, I mean, sometimes you have your good days, sometimes you have your bad days. If it doesn't work out, you need to have the energy and you need to have the drive to wake up the next morning and say, okay, you never worked today. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it again and I'm going to work even harder. And that's the kind of attitude I've always had from the start. And I think that's the reason for getting to this point. But I need to make sure I maintain that attitude to go further. I think it's so important to stay positive in the industry or even in like any artistic field that you are. Like if it's something creative, you have to be positive because we, mm. I mean, you see a lot of things on social media as well. So if you don't have a positive attitude, I think it puts a stop to, to work as well. Definitely. Some people overthink a lot of like, as in me too. Like I used to be like that as well, but I've definitely stopped after a while. Like some people think just too much into the music. Like, is it like this? Is it like that? Mo I, can, I can guarantee any artist that's listening the song that you think about the least and you don't put that much effort into is probably going to be the song that kills it the most. Yeah. And, then, and then you'll work on a song for like six months and then you'll release it and then it won't like really do that well. Because I, I feel like the audience can kind of feed off that energy. Like the audience just wants like music that's made in a happy vibe, do you know what I mean? And that's going to be the music you make just quick time and like without any big focus. But if you just overthink... Every, every little detail, I feel like the audience can feel that in the music. They, they know like when something's been worked on too much. So yeah, man, you, that attitude of just thinking about something too much is it's, it's not really going to benefit anyone, to be honest. In music. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the I feel like the listeners have become so like clever or like they're so more mm -hmm. like they know they know about music a lot more than they used to like five ten years ago. So yeah, definitely. Even if somebody has made a mistake. There's one or two people that will pick out on it and you'll probably yeah. think it's about it or something. Like, yeah, 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 that. Definitely. Let's, let's talk about the track, Miguel. Mm -hmm. it, it's in the chart. It's, it's at number one this week. It was at number one last week. It, it knocked off the track, Bumbi Hub, one day from number one. That was a massive hit. Although, on Twitter, there was a lot of, like, you know, negatives and positives. But the negatives mm -hmm. were that, you know, we saw a lot of tweets saying that, you know, Manny, you've copy and pasted the track and yeah, you know, the yeah. English track a couple of years ago. Um, whereas we did our research and we found out that it was like, you know, you are allowed to do, you can pick out thing and you, you are allowed to buy off a thing like that. So was it, how did you work on that? What was the, what is the answer that you're giving to people? Because I don't think we've heard your side of the story. Yeah, like, I think, I think it's mainly the negative comments around that was it was it was mainly a misunderstanding i don't think really people kind of understand the art of sampling because some people said that oh he copied and pasted the beat or he um you know he just got the instrumental from youtube and he put the ap vocals and grinda girl vocals on top of that i'm telling you now i probably spent more time working on that song than any of my other normal songs because that beat wasn't copied and pasted it was remade like every little there was nothing taken from the original and like i think these days probably about 50 60 percent of the music that comes out is sampled from somewhere punjabi music um but the people just don't know like where it's sampled from like there's like applications like there's something called splice where it's easy for a producer to literally drag and drop loops into their songs and like all of that is technically sampled and that's not even replayed. Like, at least I went through the effort, like spending hours and days like replaying every little instrument and trying to get it perfect and mixing it myself. And um, I, I mastered it with AP as well. Like the reason people probably tried to make a negative situa situation out of it was because they recognized the sample. Now, if somebody else releases a song and they don't recognize the sample, they're going to have no issue with it. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're just going to think like, oh yeah, this is something that they've made. But the only reason they recognised that was because it was from a song that they recognised, which I think that song came out like 19 years ago. Somebody told yeah. me the original came out a long time ago. So yeah, it was, it, it was, I mean, I've spoken to like some of the biggest producers, you can say, in, in our industry, and every single person says, like, like people, it's like some people just don't understand, like they don't understand the concept of what I did, which was, you know, 
remake a classic beat that me and AP both love and do it to such a level where people think that it was actually copied and pasted from the original. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I've been making music for over 10 years. Like, I'm not an idiot. If I wanted to, I could have I could have made a beat myself, but that was done intentionally. I, I, I'd done it because I wanted to do it and it sounded sick. And I think once people got over the whole sample thing, people kind of realised, like, oh, this is actually a sick track. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It actually, it actually sounds really good. So, yeah, I mean, that was just something... It didn't really phase us too much, to be honest. Yeah, because but even in the credits, yeah. even in the credits, it says reproduced. Yeah, so exactly. I yeah. don't know where the confusion kind of began, but yeah, yeah. You know what? Some people are like they just want to talk about something in a negative if they have the opportunity to. But yeah, the main thing is the the people that I care about, like the respected people in the industry, the respected producers. They know, like that was done, and it was done in a good way. So. That's all we really care about, to be honest. In terms of your relationship with everybody in the industry, like, are you quite close? Because we see you with Navan, we see you with Ezu, we see you with, like, you know, a couple, couple of people in the industry. But who do you gel with, like, the most? Like, who is, like, your go-to person? Is there somebody that you would ring up at 3 a.m., like, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, like, as in, I guess that's one thing that happens with us. Anyone we work with, we end up having, like, a good like personal relationship with them like we chill together and like, we like if we, if we have a link we'll go and eat food and stuff we'll like just just get together or whatever so um i would say Navan is definitely someone like that we, we get along with him we, I, I can call him up anytime jasmine is someone that I, at the start i never really thought me and jasmine would have like that kind of like like friendship kind of like, like a good friendship that would last long term but like she gets along with everyone like even in people in my family like she gets along with everyone that i know man so she's someone that we i, I would consider i've got a really good relationship with um i would say that's probably it like out of the new bunch obviously one of my closest friends is sangra vibes um he's like a brother to me man. i've known him for so long now it's not even like i didn't even think to mention his name because like he's yeah. just he's like always someone that's there do you know what i mean so yeah, I, I would say um, I've got a good relationship with anyone I work with, man. Like, there's not really anyone that's you know been like that way. I don't really want to talk to them or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Has there been a time though, like you know, when when an artist has like walked into a studio, when into your studio, and you kind of kind of just thought like, okay, like, maybe it's not going to be a friendship. We'll do it professionally. We'll get done and over with. Like, has there been? You don't have to take a date. Um, maybe like the odd odd very odd time that like, i've been doing music for a long time like they, they may be the odd person that comes through i'm like okay like this person just doesn't it doesn't really seem like he's on our kind of vibe it could be a he or she i'm not going to say who it is in it but um yeah yeah i mean it happens in it the, the, the same way it happens in like personal life like you could be you know for example you can be out and about and you might just come across someone and that person might not just be on your like on your wavelengths, do you know what I mean? That it happens all the time. So yeah, it's, it's I guess you, like you actually mentioned human. Jasmine and you and Jasmine are like, you know, as you said, you guys are good friends. But the music that you guys have produced is is insane. Like it's something so new, so fresh and mm. it's worked really well as well. We've seen the outcome of it as well. How did it kind of start with you and Jasmine? Like how did you guys actually meet and like how did it come about? We met, um, it was it was at an event, I think maybe, I, I can't quite remember, I think it was last year, maybe early last year, um, uh, we met at an event um, and it was actually her, kind of like the her man, manager, Mandeep, who like looks after her UK stuff, in it? So, like, so I don't know if she's a manager, but she looks after some of her UK stuff. Um, and she basically was talking to my brother and then we met Jasmine through her had a studio session with her and that was the first time I played her the Punjipa beat and I had already known that I'm going to meet Jasmine so I made that beat specially for her like I played her about four or five other beats but when I played her the Punjipa beat like you just felt like the atmosphere in the room changed like everyone just started nodding their head and like she was like yo what what is that beat like, I, w I want to do something on that beat and then and then yeah and then from there it was kind of we stayed in touch um it was a mission to find lyrics for Panjibba. Like we tried so many people to try and like write something on there. It wasn't working. And in the end, um, KV, he killed it, man. Like 
and this was a week before the video shoot. So we had the video shoot planned, and we didn't even have lyrics for the song. Oh, so the song was like the vocals weren't even done. Nah, nah, nah. Like we, we, like it was like let's say she came to the UK on Monday, and the shoot was planned for Sunday, and we, and on Monday we never had a song. And I think by Wednesday I got the lyrics off KV. Even I was, cons I was on KV's case, man. Like every day saying, bro, like we need these lyrics, man. And he obviously he's an artist as well, so he's gonna take his time doing something, which I completely understand. And then he came through, he killed it. I think we recorded the vocals on like the Wednesday. Thursday and then the song was just about ready for Sunday for the shoot so it was crazy last minute man but it worked out like really well a last minute track but it came out amazing and like mm. even now like when you play the track it's it's just so new it's so fresh and it's just nice to listen to but you don't get bored of tracks yeah. like that and somebody yeah. asked a really good question and I actually kind of got my eyes on there um they asked like you know how do you keep your music keep your style kind of updated how do you keep it kind of fresh how do you work like how do you make it quite new because it's quite easy for a music producer to kind of be repetitive yeah 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 um I, I would say that i would say you have to change with where the sound is going like as in just what's working in the industry what people are listening to but there's a way to do it like you can't just change your whole sound like you need to do it in your style because like if i just change my sound every single like year or something then i'm gonna have no identity like no one's gonna know like this is manny sandu this is his sound like this is what he does because people come to me for the manny sandu sound basically but you can change your your style but you can do it in your sound so for example like a song like in demand that sounds nothing like dorney colony or anything like that but you can say that it's got uh it's got the manny sandu sound even like Benjibba has the Mani Sandu like signature sound on it, do you know what I mean? So it's about knowing what the people want, but you don't want to do it where you lose your identity. You want to do it so people understand that, okay, he's moving with the times, but he's doing it in his own way. Yeah. That's what I would say is the best way of doing it. That, I, think, I think that's such a great answer because I think I've never really like got that take from from anybody like they've not, never gave me this answer and I always wanted to mm -hmm. know like how do you guys make it so new um in terms of like you know coming up with new artists working with new music um do you feel like you know because radio in demand and then there was a couple of tracks you did with Navan do you have this thing where like there's a backlash as well do people come to you and they say okay Manny like this is not this is not it and like you know you're doing the same thing or has there been a backlash to like your own identity or um i mean i i guess you see it you, you definitely see it happen but the good thing is that i would say the good thing about that is every big producer that i look up to the people say the exact same thing about them as well like even if we look in the hip-hop industry um like there's a there's a producer called dj premier he makes like old school kind of hip hop, like East Coast kind of music. And a big people criticize him all the time saying that his beats all sound the same. Um, even like producers like, I guess, Dre, to a certain extent, he has a sound. In the Punjabi industry, Zeus, they used to say the same about Zeus. They used, technically used to say the same about True School. But people don't understand that that's, that's like identity that a music producer has. And if you don't want to listen, listen to it, like no one's, I'm not forcing anyone to listen to my music. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm putting out, putting it out there. If you want to listen to it, you can listen to it. If you don't want to listen to it, it's not a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not going to affect me in, in, in any way, basically. But there's people out there that listen to my music for my sound. And that's who I make the music for. The people that don't want to listen to it, I don't make music for them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah it's just, a, you've got to have thick skin in this industry. I Definitely. And I think, I think this is, that, that's one of the reality of the industry as well that you have to have like thick skin because otherwise it's just you're going to be too emotional you're going to be too upset yeah man you. trust me like people are ruthless these days on, on the internet so um you definitely just need to be able to block out all the negativity and um yeah i think that's that's maybe that's some advice for, like the the younger people coming through like there's going to be people like chatting a lot on the internet like even if you're not even a music producer you could be just a normal person and you'll just get hate on, on Instagram, but you just gotta remember, man, you gotta take everything with a pinch of salt. It's, it's, it's over the phone. Like, if someone's coming up to you to your face saying something, fair enough, then 
then it's a situation. But I don't really like take anything serious that's said to me over the phone because it's like yeah. it's like a fake person basically almost. Yeah, um, but who's not? Maybe it's some guys. It's actually probably is. <laughs> probably yeah, yeah. Or the other way around. If it was a girl's yeah. picture, it's most likely a guy. So yeah. Yeah. In terms of like, we had a couple of questions come through on on Instagram. There's two names that keep popping up, and like, like you know, they're really in demand right now. There's either Gar or just Sibu Musara. They're doing really well in the industry. Are you coming with them? Because we haven't seen you pair up with them anytime. Like, um, yeah, I mean, I would say never say never. I mean, the the opportunity is always there. Um, they're both what they're doing is just amazing, man. I think they've, you know. They're pretty much already in the history books of people that are taking the Punjabi industry to like a further level in terms of like the numbers they're doing are like bigger than mainstream artists. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, definitely big up both of them, man. They they absolutely killing it, and um, I'm I'm sure most likely it, it will happen eventually. But yeah, I, yeah, I can't see it. You never know; it might not happen. It might happen, but most I, I think hopefully it will happen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Who do you listen to like nowadays? Like, who are you listening to um, from the Punjabi industry? It could be from from any like you know mainstream industry as well. Like, who do you listen to the most? Um, well, obviously, being like born in the UK and stuff, I've always followed like UK mainstream music a lot as well. So, like, even back in the day when it was garage music, I used to love garage music. Um, then, like, grime music came. I used to love grime music. Now we've got like UK drill music, which is killing it. I love. I love any. I love the UK drill sound, man. Just the music, music-wise, I love it. Um, some of these young guys that are doing well are killing it as well. Um, I'm definitely going to start producing some of that stuff and putting it out there. I've been messing around with a few drill beats, so yeah. I mean, you've got Punjabi, produ- produ- not Punjabi producers, but guys from the UK that are Punjabi, like JB, like Steel Bangles and stuff. They they're killing it in that industry. Yeah. Um, so that's probably really what I'm listening to in terms of like English music. Um, in the Punjabi industry, um, who's good, man? Yeah, like people like Navan. I like Navan. Like the names you said, like Sidhu Karan, they they're doing well. Uh, AP lot. I'm amazed at what they're doing right now because they yeah. just. I'm probably the most excited about them um, because they're just dropping fire. Like every single song is just it sounds sick. So yeah, I would say that those guys are people I'm definitely excited about. Yeah. Future. And you've worked with AP and Grindo and the whole team. Now they came around like really like, you know, during the lockdown when we actually heard more of them, they, they were dropping so much and there was a there was a day I, I, I went on Twitter and AP Dillon was actually trending on Twitter in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um and suddenly it's just like these names have come out of kind of nowhere and everybody's like, Who are these lads? Because they've yeah. locked off Sindhu they on, on the charts. And that's a big thing, no matter what you say, like, you know, in terms of like although like in India they might be popping off and stuff, but locking yeah. up Sindhu in the charts is, is a big thing. So these lads, like, you know, even UK you work with them. How did you kind of come across them and what do you kind of see them moving forward? Because it they've kind of just bought something new. It's it's very fresh. Yeah, yeah. You're you're hundred percent right. I think they they as well as bringing a different kind of music out, they've kind of like shown a different kind of fan base, really, because their fans are um, obviously they're just starting out at the moment, so their fan base is going to grow and grow even more. But like their fan base is crazy in Canada and even in the UK is and like America, like. It's the youngsters that are really, really in like the Western countries that are really listening to their music. And because we dropped from a jail with them, we can see like the numbers and like, where it's coming from. And trust me, these guys are getting crazy numbers. And the, the locations it's coming from are so interesting. It's like Canada, UK, America. Um, I think obviously eventually they're going to hit Punjab, but they're like basically giving birth to a new audience, which is young people in these Western countries that just love the urban music because they're doing like the urban music in Punjab was urban anyway but they're doing like a whole new level of urban music yeah. they're making music that is like it sounds like in like, go, like mainstream music but you've got Punjabi vocals on top of it so yeah man I think their journey is only hasn't even started yet man they've got a long way to go I, I actually remember like you know I came across the track Deadly and I was like who is AP Dillo I was literally thinking I was like who is this guy Did you know, yeah, and yeah. suddenly it's popped up and hence they're doing so well in terms of numbers because they're getting streamed in mm-hmm. insane numbers like I've seen the 
seeing the background like you know information that we get for the charts as well yeah, yeah. Like, looking at the numbers we're seeing that people are actually buying the track as well yeah, and it's yeah. very rare that people buy the track um working with them they're from canada i believe you're from the yeah. uk yeah. did you approach them did they approach you how did it kind of work so my brother uh, who like does the jazz he does at like, the company side of stuff like with me basically he, he handles all of that stuff that like, the company side of stuff i do the music he um contacted ap like a while ago like quite a long time ago um like before deadly and everything um and like he, he put me on to them as well so he showed me their music and i was like yeah man these guys are sick like we should do something with them so my brother was talking to them and we sent them like loads of beats we were actually working on another song which like we we're still working on that song um and we just happened to send them the majel beat during that and then they just like done it in like 2 3 days like just turned the song around and they were like yeah like we want to drop this one now um so yeah like th- that's how the whole relationship came about but um yeah they 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 cool guys man like ap is mad talented like as well as people that some people don't even know like he produces music as well he makes beats he mixes he masters like and like he's got a good ear for music like he he's picky as well which is a good thing um but yeah there's going to be a lot of just a lot of good music coming from them guys man the lads seem a bit intimidating are they intimidating or are they quite nice or nah, no no i haven't nah, heard nah. from them yet so is that why nah they're not intimidating they're, they're like proper like cool guys man they're all like down to earth no like not even one time working with them was there ever like any kind of arrogance or like them like, trying to make it difficult like it was like probably the most smoothest collaboration i've ever done like it was so simple like everything was so simple to do but now nah, they, they they i mean i don't know maybe with other people they might be um <laughs> you know what i mean but now nah, they, they they're all good man good guys like, coming back coming back to you what's like the best compliment you've received so far like you know so far i mean like your entire career what's the best compliment um it's going to be tough for me to think of one like on the top of my head to be honest but i would say the best feeling you get is when like i've i've seen people that comment on my music and stuff on like youtube and to be honest it's not very often you go on a youtube music on like a mu- music video and like people are talking about the music so much like yeah. normally people say that like, sick song like this and that like vocals sound great but one thing i i'm like oh thank god every single day man for this but like people really when they talk about my music they really like feel my music like the same amount of like love and attention i put into my music it's like they know that they can feel that like some people like say like when they like close my, their eyes and listen to my music like it just takes them to like a different world obviously it depends on the song in it as well like if it's that kind of song like gandhi is that kind of song where i think like it's just like a, a dreamy song where you can just like take you like somewhere else you know what I mean and like that's the kind of thing I want to do when I make the music and the fact that people feel that and they also um kind of resonate with that as well that's the biggest compliment that when people hear my music they actually comment on the music like yo the music is so sick so that's that's probably the biggest compliment I would say it, it's actually very true because with with music and whatever whatever's coming out and like you know the song in general people do focus on lyrics more but one thing we have actually noticed with your music is that you know the first thing you notice like you won't notice the lyrics first you notice the music first that's a massive compliment for for a music producer i guess yeah it's kind of like criticism what's one of the like worst criticism you you received and like you know <laughs> um th- th- there's actually some funny ones in it like um I don't know if you remember the Sony Rangier video um where I'm like walking around with the harmonium Oh and, I remember that really well. Yeah um like I don't know at the time it felt like the best idea in the world to to, to do that storyline and like when I'm like um getting angry at the girl for wearing jewelry and stuff but like I don't know like we were young then in it so and we didn't have anyone around us to like help with music I did music video ideas so we used to do that all ourselves um so like yeah like I would say that was like a funny one where people used to say oh Manny Sandu yeah he gets the harmonium and he just walks around in random fields and plays the harmonium that was quite a funny one but as you grow older you just I just laugh at it I find it funny as well like I look at the video and think oh my god man I've watched that video so many times and I can just remember the girl just throwing her jewelry away and that was that was a different kind of vibe 
Yeah, very different. Very. I guess we were trying to relate to the lyrics somehow, but maybe we needed like a video director to come in and say, "Was do it like this, do it like that." But we were kids, man. We were young when we used to do that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. But it's like funny criticism, so I, I just laugh at it. Mate, in terms of like food and like you know, are you quite foodie? Do you like do you like quite a lot of foods, or are you just quite basic with food? Nah, I, I love food, man. I love, like food is probably like my second favorite thing after music. Yeah. yeah. What's your yeah. favorite thing? Like, can you cook as well? Um, I'm probably not the best cook. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not the best cook. Um, I love Punjabi. I would say Punjabi food's my like number one food. Like, I love any any kind of Punjabi food. I love. Um, I just think we've got such a like Punjabi food is such good food. We have man like from like breakfast like paranti and stuff, and we have like like roti. You can have like dal sabji. It's such a variety of food. And then like the desserts, Punjabi desserts are amazing. Snacks, golgappe, samosa, pakore. Like, I love that, man. I, I love Punjabi food. Is number one. Um, and then second, I would say Italian. I love Italian food as well, like um, pizzas, lasagnas. I'm 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 the kind of person where I'll have like two months where I'm the healthiest person in the world, like. I'm the strictest person in the world, the healthiest person in the world, and then I go through two months where I'm the most unhealthiest person in the world. That's the mood in itself. I think everybody will relate in the comments. Everybody wants yeah. to, like, I can just relate to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have my ups and downs, but what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to find like a balance where, um, you know, like I enjoy my food, but at the same time I'm eating healthy as well. Like five times a week healthy, two days a week, you know, go wild. Yeah. 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 Maddie, in terms of like, you know, just just apart from music, I know you're going to say music is my only hobby and like that's the only thing I do. But mm. apart from music, what else do you like to do? Like, you know, is there something else you do in your free time? Because now music has become your work as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to sound boring, man. But to be honest, not really. Like, I love, I, if I'm not doing music, I'm just chilling, like watching movies, relaxing. Like, that. that's literally all I do. I, I'm either making music or I'm, Chilling. I can't really think of anything, any hobbies I do outside of music because I don't do anything. I don't play football. I don't like. I don't do anything. I don't. I. I, I there's no sport that I'm really into that that I do outside of um, outside of like music and stuff. I'm not really doing anything. I just like chilling, watching movies, eating, and then that's it. Really. Yeah. I'm a boring guy in it. Do you eat whilst you make music as well? Like, are you? <laughs> you know what? I've actually like discovered. Yeah, like. What music producer do you know that is in good shape? <laughs> There's not many. There's not many because we need food, man. We need food to like, fuel our brains. Like we need creativity, and like creativity comes from. I've done deep research about this. Like, wh what chemicals in your body like release creativity and stuff? And like, sadly enough, it comes from like bad food, man. Like junk food and stuff. <laughs> so um, yeah, but it's all about having a balance. You don't want to like kill yourself just making like, music now we know what you do in your free time you're searching stuff like effects of junk food <laughs> there you go there you go that is my hobby just <laughs> researching crazy stuff yeah yeah that's pretty much what in I do. terms of speaking Punjabi and you know like you know communicating with the Punjabi and are you are you good at speaking but I mean I've never heard you speak Punjabi ever yeah I mean my my mum can't speak English like my my Masi can't speak English. Like I speak to all of my, my my family. I speak to in Punjabi. Even singers, like the singers that I work with in Punjab, I speak to them all. I speak to them all in Punjabi. So yeah. I guess the only reason I don't publicly do it is because you know, like you know what people are like. You mispronounce one word, and then everyone will be like, "Oh, in Punjabi, ni on this and that." So just to avoid it, I I just you know. I, I, but obviously, if I meet people when I'm in Punjab, I go to Punjab a lot. If I meet people on the road, I, I don't speak to them in English. I talk to them in Punjabi. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing we realize in Punjab, like I've been a, a couple of times now, and like even like you know, even if you go for work, people speak English more than Punjabi over there now. So it's it's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It feels weird sometimes. Like you have going, to find people to speak Punjabi. Yeah, you're you're right. You're hundred percent right. Um, it's definitely even sometimes like when I'm working with a singer, like. They talk. They're trying to talk to me in English, and like they're struggling a little bit. I'm like, yo, talk to me in Punjabi, man. Like, I can talk to you in Punjabi. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, you're right. India's, but it's 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 at the same time. Like, I'm not gonna say it's a good thing, but I, what I was gonna say is India's progressing a lot. You go there, and like, 
it doesn't even feel like India anymore. Yeah. Like they've got like crazy like hotels and like restaurants, but that's a good thing. Like they should have that. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. we've had it over here in, in the UK. We, we've had the, you know, um, kind of we've been lucky to live a good life over here, and they should have that as well over there. there there's you know no reason why we shouldn't think of India as like going to like you know twenty years ago. Now yeah. it's more modern yeah. than the UK. So like fair like fair play to them man it's really easy for us lot to go to punjab eat like i, I would talk about punjab more because e even like outside of punjab it's only like a state now but like, when you go to jandi like it doesn't seem like you you're in india it seems like you're in the uk like they have like a bigger more than we have like mm -hmm. it's crazy it's like i remember back in the day when like i was young you used to go to india and then they used to be look everyone would just look at you you just get looks by everyone yeah they'd be like yeah, like Munda Barawaya. Now you go, no one even looks at you. No one's going to like double look at you or anything like that, which is, it's a good thing, man. It, it just shows that India is progressing. Punjab is progressing at just like crazy speed. Um, and it, it, if anything is good, it makes you feel more at home when you go there. Like I used to go to India, we used to stay our, our, um, in our bend. And like they just used to be like, we used to go in the summer sometimes, they used to be like Gerlia all over the wall and stuff, like lizards coming out of nowhere. Now it's a bit more comfortable. We can go stay in some nice hotels and stuff. And you don't have to be scared. Like, you know, there's going to be a ninja or something, like a Trust nine me. or three park. I know, man, I know, I know. But it's definitely moved in a good, in a good way, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's good for everyone. It's good for everyone. Definitely. So you've gone to India. What, what village are you going get up in India? Like, I asked you that. Uh, Talwandi Slim. Um, it's near Nakodar, so like I guess you could say Jalandar side, it's about Jalandar half an hour. Ends, you're, yeah. you're from the same end, so that's good. Rapping like the Wabbe, it? Always. Yeah. Even though my last song was called Majel, but that was them guys. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it there, but it's alright, I guess that was their thing. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of the album, a lot of people are asking about album. Mm. Are you working on an album right now? We, yeah, I, I was definitely working on an album. There were plans, but to be honest, like lockdown kind of definitely had an effect on it because when I work on an album, I want I need to go places. I need to go to India. I need to go to even other, I was planning on going to Canada this year. I, was, I wanted to record people. Like when I work on an album, I don't want just people to send me the vocals over the internet. Fair enough, now, now and again, for singles, that's okay. But when you're working on an album, you're working on like, it's like a body of work, right? It's, it's a lot of work goes into an album. So an album is definitely going to come. There's songs here that are, that are ready for an album, but um, it would be better if I was with some artists. So I'm just waiting now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think the traveling thing has definitely been affected. So like, you know, traveling and working with people like that, like quite closely because there's social distance. Although we don't really, I, I haven't seen an Indian follow social distancing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of them ones, it's like, you kind of have to remember it because at the end of the day, this stuff is still real, it still happens, yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah, I guess it's a big part of it is just taking care of yourself. And I mean, even this doesn't really affect me, but there's singers in India that I've been speaking to and their whole shows have just been canceled. Like they, uh, pretty much a whole year of income has gone for them because yeah. they had shows lined up and that hasn't really happened for them. So. It's a shame. It's a shame, really. Um, but what can you do? It's, it's the situation we're living in, and hopefully, um, you know, we can get over it. Before I let you go, there was a there was a question that I I really liked, and I really want to ask you. In the UK, we're often told that you know, if you want to go into the entertainment world, if you want to work in entertainment, it's not a full time job. You can't do it full time. Have you had that as well from your family? Or like, do you do this full time? Is it easy to do it full time? Do you suggest people to do it full time or? It's definitely not easy. It's 100% not easy. There's only a few people that do it full time. I mean, luckily, like we we haven't had to do like anything else. Like, we're, like, right now, what we're doing in the music stuff is just keeping us going. Um, but that's, I mean, it's, it's different, especially being in the UK. Like being in India, I find that pretty much everyone does it full time because they're able to do that over there. I mean, not everyone, but majority of people that I've worked yeah. with in India do it full time because they can do that. Do you know what I mean? Um, in the UK, life is a little bit different. We've got bills, we've got, you know, we've got parents that are on our cases to like, you know, make money and stuff and do stuff. But um, 
it's one of them ones. If, if if you want it enough, you're going to find a way to do it full time. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's going to be very hard. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be probably one of the hardest things to do. But if you want it enough, anyone can do it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think it's the thing about balancing in the in the UK or any other country that you you're from, like any country yeah. outside of India, because we have to have jobs. I think it's so important because it. It's not going to work without jobs. Like it's just like that. So, do yeah. you, you work apart from apart from music as well? No, 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 no. We just do music, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, it's. I'm not saying that even if you, even if you've got a job, like it's 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 not impossible to carry on doing music. You just need to you just need to grind, man. You need to work. You need to work constantly. Like you need to be coming back from work, work until like three four o'clock in the morning. Waking up, going to work. I know people that have done that. Do you know what I mean? I've been in a situation where I've done that when I was younger and stuff. Like you just have to, you have to grind, man. You need to work hard to, to kind of um, follow your dreams and and make it a reality. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's amazing. Well, it's always lovely talking to you, and like it's been amazing talking to you today as well. I think a lot of people, I like, I learned a lot from you um, in today's conversation, and I hope everybody else enjoyed it as well. Anything you want to say before I let you go? to like everybody watching and in general um just thank you very much for the support for the love a lot more music coming soon um and yeah man just keep showing love to what we're doing we you know there's not a lot of people in the UK that are doing something but we we're, we're definitely one of the people that are doing something so um yeah keep the UK music industry alive man and um that's it really big up everyone big up for Asia and big up yourself I'm I'm really excited to hear what you've got in in store for us upcoming in the next couple of weeks and uh um, yeah. wish you all the best for everything because you you're smashing it as always. Thank you man. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. You take care. Have a lovely evening. Go have some <laughs> and probably sleep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. You, you take care. Bye-bye, Manny. Bye. 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 bye.